So we're at chapter 20 of your world history. And this chapter talks about liberalism. We're going to go on to talk about the roots of modern liberalism, the gateway of globalism, humanism, and its vices. These are things that people are talking about every day in the political realm of America and in the world. And so we'll, we're going to go and start from that and find out what liberalism and conservatism really are. So let's begin. The definition of a liberalism. The definition of liberalism, well, first of all, um, liberalism has caused the cultural breakdown that threatened to destroy the very roots of Western civilization. So we really know, need to know what we're talking about when we're talking about liberalism. The word liberal means free, it's Latin. A liberal is someone who desires freedom from something or freedom to do something. Whether good or bad depends upon what the liberal wants the freedom from or what they want to do, right? Sometimes liberal stands for something good, such as free enterprise or liberal arts education. And some people are even known for liberal giving. So you can say the word liberal is actually, and actually not a bad word. But if you go into the definition of what a liberal political is, I mean, you can go on to say not restricted, not restricted to the literal meaning as liberal interpretation of the law, broad minding, favoring reform or pro progressive in, as in um, religion, progressive religion, not conservative. And conservative intending to preserve the established institutions and methods and to resist or oppose any changes. So let's go and find out what this means. As we look in this, we can look and think, is this going to be bad? Am I a liberal or am I a conservative? So let's keep going. Modern liberalism. Now we're, at, now we're talking what liberalism is today. The desire, the modern liberalism is the desire to be free from absolute standards and morals, especially of the scriptures in the Bible. You wonder why liberals, they want to get rid of those 10 commandments, right? It begins with the unbiblical idea that man is basically good. We can look right now at what's going on in the world and we can basically say that mankind is not basically good with the amount of evil um, that's happening every day. The challenges, this challenges basic assumptions as the existence of absolute truth, objective knowledge, and binding morality. So modern liberalism challenges these basic assumptions that basically say there's no absolute truth, there's no objective knowledge, and there's no real morality to go by. That's pretty, those are pretty um, important things that we, that, we, that we go by in everyday life, especially as Christians. Modern liberalism has the desire to free us from those things, right? Free us from authority, or free us from order, free us from a restraint, and even free us from responsibility. So liberals are saying we want to be free from these things. But however, liberalism leads to the imposed restraints of government control over many aspects of life, resulting in, respons uh, in responsibility from the individual to the state. So basically what happens with liberalism, they go to a state control. They end up having the government um, control and picking that leader that can control people. And so liberalism, meaning freedom, actually um, leads to bondage, doesn't it? So, liberalism leads to totalitarian state. That's a dictator, right? Instead of freedom, liberal ends in an all-powerful totalitarian state. The same ideas of unbelief and revolution that gave rise to communism, socialism, and other false philosophies also spawned liberalism. So communism, socialism, they all, you can put them all in the same boat with the liberalism. 
here's a picture of those um, lined up to get food when it comes to the point of socialism controlling and these totalitarian leaders here, Mussolini, Stalin, and Hitler. Modern liberalism has had many tragic consequences, war, tyranny, despair, many of these things for mankind throughout history when we look at modern liberalism. Now, what is conservatism? Well, standing in opposition to uh, liberalism is conservatism. You'd think they'd be at opposite ends. The principle or practice, conservatism is a principle or practice of conserving or preserving the established traditions or institutions and op opposing changes in them. So conservatism means to oppose change and to have the way we, we were, you know, the principle of conserving or preserving. Conservatism too can be good or bad depending on what you want to conserve. A conservative communist would want to preserve the principles of Marx and Lenin, right? A conservative Muslim would wish to preserve the teachings of Muhammad and resist Christian missionary efforts. So conservative can be, conservatism can be good or bad. Western conservatism. Now we're talking about not just conservative, but conservative in the West, which includes us. Many Western conservatives believe there are eternal values that need to be preserved in human thought and action. In preserving the Judeo-Christian heritage has made Western civilization great. So preserve those val values, those values on which America was founded. Western conservative principles. So we're gonna go through, I think there's 10 of them, or eight of them. Well, we're gonna start going through, what are these Western conservative principles? Okay, and those are the things that we've been, that America was founded on, and we were founded, and we know in the West that gave, that gave us freedom was our Western principles. So, number one, there are absolutes established by God and there are eternal values. Number one, God. God is absolute and those and he has put forth absolutes. Number two, there is more to life than this present world. We have an eternal nature. Um, we're, it's, there's more to life, a spiritual. We're part, we're, we have a spiritual nature and we're looking for um, that heavenly place. Number three, because of man's fallen nature, sin, there is a necessity to have government, to have government authority, which is law, and for order and responsibility and restraints, okay? So because we are sinful, we need to have law and order, and we need to have responsibility, and we need to have restraints. Traditions as the family and the church and community are very important because government alone cannot provide for all man's needs. So God has put forth these institutions, especially the family and especially the church. Number four, West, these Western principles. Number four, because of human nature, people will be happier and productive if they maintain private responsibility for their own property, families, and futures. Pretty important, isn't it? So um, basically we'll be happier if we have our own family, if we have our own property, and if we're looking for our future and that American dream, we will be happier, not controlled by the government. Number five. Because people differ in many ways, any artificial attempt in creating and imposing equality upon society will lead to discontent and eventually dictatorship. And it has. When they come, when the government comes in and imposes equality and say, we're going to make everyone equal and saying equal, um, equal financially and equal, have, have e equal equality in everything. 
Well, then they are not really equal because those that are putting forth the equality are going to be in charge. Hmm. So, because people differ in ways, an artificial attempt, they come in trying to impose equality, um, it will lead to discontent and dictatorship because I'll have to have a dictatorship to impose this equality. When we say all men are created equal, we know. But in the attempt of taking everything away um, and and putting it putting it forth, taking it taking something from someone else and making them equal, equal in the physical sense doesn't work. Number six, for humanity to survive and prosper, the truths form the past or the truths from the past must be transmitted to each generation in education and providing a foundation for facing present problems and setting a course for the future. So, for human beings to, to survive, it says, and to prosper, we must have the truths from the past. Now, that not that happening now? They're trying to take away the past. They're, take, they're tearing down statues and everything else from the past now. So, we need to know about the past and know what happened in the past for each gen, um, generation in education to, to actually prosper and, and prosper and have a foundation for facing their present problems and their future. Okay, Edmund Burke. Edmund Burke is considered the father of modern conservatism. Out of the chaos of the French Revolution, when the destructive forces of liberalism threatened to engulf Europe, Edmund Burke, a member of the British Parliament, eloquently expressed Western conservative ideas in his Reflections on the French Revolution. Edmund Burke was an Irishman, and um, in, in Dublin, he founded um, the Historical Society there, but he was mainly known to stand up for his conservative ideas. One of the things he said is the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Isn't that true? Another here, it says, the greater the power, the more dangerous the person is. This was Edmund Burke. So remember, he's the father of modern conservatism. And he was in the British Parliament, but he was an Irishman. The Bible. The most powerful conservative force through the ages has been the Bible. The Bible contains God's revelation of himself, the universe, man, morality, and the conflict between good and evil. So that is our conservative belief. That's where we, our foundation is on, on, the, on the Bible and on the Lord Jesus Christ. Liberal pseudosciences. Pseudo means false. They are, they are counterfeit. So there's a lot of liberal pseudosciences we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to have to do another video, but we'll start with them here and we'll see. In the late 19th and 20th century, liberal philosophies arose in the name of science but were really science falsely call, called so, as we see in 1 Timothy 6.20, disguising science. Well, we know about Darwinism and Marxism, and these epitomized these pseudosciences, of course, and were a foundation set for more pseudosciences. But many more arose at this time, and they all have similar foundations and similar um, characteristics. These pseudosciences and their founders all related to one another in the desire to strike down absolute truth and rebel against God. So as you look there, you'll see those, their motives of against God, against absolute truth, and rebellion in that point, and, and not believing in, um, in sin, the sin's nature. Here's Karl Marx. See his little hidden hand? I always said that hidden hand because it reminds me of the Illuminati. You know, so it's a bad sign. Anyway, um, or the Masons. So and this, is, of course, is Sigmund Freud. And this goes on to um, Darwin right there. Pseudoscience. One of the biggest pseudosciences is positivism. 
You'd think positivism would be positive and he'd be thinking positive, but it's not. In fact, it's a false label. Positivism would be happiness and joy and all those things, and it, this leads to despair. So this guy is August Comte, and he lived in 1798 to 1857. What did he say about positivism? Positivism states that nothing can be known except observable facts. I mean, all you know is observable facts. There's no spiritual, he's saying. Comte believed all knowledge was confined to what could be observed by the human senses. Anything spiritual should absolutely be ignored, he said. In fact, Comte declared history showed how mankind had progressed from belief in God to positive so-called scientific knowledge. So what he was saying, he says, we have progressed. It's old fashioned. The old fashioned way was to believe in God. So now we're, we are going to think positive thoughts. Have you ever heard somebody say, um, I hope you have positive thoughts. When you say, um, would you pray for, pray for me? And they say, well, I'll think positive thoughts. This is where it came from. Um, the positive so-called scientific knowledge, he said, is, is above God because he didn't believe in God and that we have progressed since we're away from God in that belief as being the old way. Neither man nor nature obeys a superior will other than their own immutable laws. So what's he saying? He's saying we have um, immutable laws, our own laws, but it has nothing to do with God and we don't need to obey God. Hmm. So he says, other scientists discover these, they could manipulate both nature and society and create an earthly utopia free from God and his laws. So he was saying, yes, as scientists, as we get to and discover these things, we're going to be able to have an earthly utopia. Man's going to get so wise and so good and we're going to be so free from God and free from not needing God's laws. So he's looking for that utopia, that new world order. Later, Comte coined the term sociology for his new science of human society. So I didn't know that, you know. Here we have the field of sociology, right? This field of sociology um, being August Comte. You know, I've studied sociology, and sociology is the study of a man. But at this point, sociology is a human, studying for humanism without God. So, you know, when, you're, when you go into a class, they say, this is a sociology class. Hmm. You have to think twice if its, if it's base is positivism in August Comte without God. Secular psychology. Secular psychology is the wicked positivism, Darwinism, and religious liberalism cause people to lose confidence in the existence of a personal God and to turn instead to psychology, the study of the mind for answers regarding human behavior. So basically, secular psychology is pointing to of that psychology without God, and we need to find the answers to human behavior without the belief of God. That's secular psychology, right? Human psychology in a lot of ways, the study, the study of the mind has a foundation in God. Sigmund Freud. Okay, and he's the beginning of psycho analysis and that psychology. I'm going to stop there and we're going to go on to the next video because there's quite there's a few other guys here to go over. I think this is important especially um, when you're going and looking in, in college books and you see these things and you wonder is this true science? So let's stop right